So we know that gold comes from mines, but how does it get from being underground to being the bed for a sleeping dragon? Also, you should know that I refuse to talk about the potential non-existence of dragons. Anthony here for DNews, and I always tended to imagine gold mining as a guy down by a river with a pan, shaking it around, hoping to find gold dust. I mean, I know that's not how it's done today, but that's the picture in my head. That's called panning, and it works because gold is heavier than most minerals. So you shake a pan, the gold sifts down to the bottom, and then you pour out the water and the other rocks, and your gold sits right there. Panning is done by enthusiasts or even some small-scale mining companies these days, but it's very slow, and the results are not great. Large-scale modern mining uses much more complex techniques. First, there's prospecting. Prospecting is basically searching out and testing sites that could contain enough gold to be profitable. See, gold usually exists in very small particles. Only one out of every billion atoms of rock on the earth is gold, but geologists take surveys and lab samples of minerals from specific areas to estimate whether they'll be able to find load deposits in the area. That means big solid chunks of gold, not just particles. The countries with the most gold currently are South Africa, the US, and Australia. The most gold in the world is actually on the ocean floor. We just don't have a cost-effective way to get to it. Once the deposit is found, the actual mining process begins. There used to be a lot of load deposits near the surface of the earth, but as you can probably imagine, we've torn those to shreds. In the increasingly rarer case that a near surface deposit is found, a process called open pit mining is used. The miners drill a bunch of holes, fill them with explosives, and then detonate them. And they put the resulting chunks of rock into these trucks and they haul it off to begin the next step. But load deposits are more increasingly found deeper in the earth, which becomes more complicated. The miners then, they drill this access shaft into the ground, and then all along the shaft, they dig multiple vertical pits called stopes. The links vary, but the examples I found were all between 10 and 15 meters deep. And then they place explosives all along the length of the stopes, and they set them off. The blast sends chunks of rocks to the bottom, they haul them up, and they put them into the trucks. And once all this mining is done, the gold gets extracted back at a mill. Those giant boulders are crunched down into this fine dust, and mixed with water to form this slushy, muddy substance called slurry. Cyanide and oxygen are added to the slurry, which react together and suck the gold out of the rock in a process called leaching. Yeah, cyanide, like the poison, which is an environmental problem because all that leftover sludge and cyanide has to go somewhere. Luckily, newer processes are being perfected that use stuff like cornstarch. Cornstarch considerably friendlier than poison. So all the gold is sifted and filtered out of all that stuff and then smelted. All the little bits are thrown into a furnace at about 1200 degrees Celsius with this chemical mixture called flux, which gets rid of all the remaining non-gold stuff. Then the molten gold is poured into solid bars, which gets sent off to refineries to get rid of any more remaining impurities. You know, it is a complicated process. And for all that effort and all our hunting, we have only ever found about 152,000 metric tons of gold in all all of human history. We find 907 million metric tons of iron every year. No wonder why gold is worth about $1,250 an ounce. Still easier than going off alone to some mountain with sled dogs and a pickaxe though. If you want to know more about how all that went down in the gold rush, then check out Klondike, which is a three night miniseries on Discovery. It premieres on Monday the 20th at 9, 8 central, and it's got Rob Stark in it. Oh, I missed him. It's good to know he's okay.